So, thank you for all being here today. Uh, it's been a long 11 months. We have a lot of people to thank for this at the city level. Right on our contractor and Ran, are you around, Ran? Where's Ran the man? He's, okay, we have a superintendent that, it's people that make things. So I'll get Ran up here in a minute because he's truly a superstar today or we wouldn't be standing here today. So, how many have been to one of these events before? That's good, that's good. Bunch of new faces, I like it. So when we got this commission, it was the result of a public effort to pass a bond issue. We pay for things like this as citizens. That's part of the privilege we have in America. And so this is a very important thing that it was because of you that we got to do this for the sixth largest city in America. And as young architects, we undertook to make it the special place that it's become. We programmed with 28 citizen meetings. We had a great library staff we worked with and wrote a long program. We brought together engineers and a collaboration. Bruder DWL Architects was a collaborative effort we associated with another firm here. And we worked with a great international engineer named Ove Arup and Associates that were into building systems. This is, was the greenest building in America when it was completed in 1995. And that's before we even talked about plaques and things on buildings and were concerned about sustainability. This is a building that acknowledges that there is global warming. We don't deny it. It tells us on those shelves that there would be global warming. So, it was a great journey. Wendell Burnett, come on up Wendell, you can, he's gonna be part of the program today and he is my colleague, my associate, it's a very special thing. We worked together for 11 years and he gave his life to this building for six of those 11. And he now has a very distinguished career of his own. So we're gonna sort of split the responsibility here of talking about what you're about to see. Light has always been important as any physical material in making and remembering architecture. Light's a powerful tool that doesn't cost a lot of money. You just have to sculpt it and craft it and make it magic. So what we're here today to do, and what I'd like you all to do right now, is turn your back on me. Please, everybody, people that were here before, you know the routine. So we want to move your chair around so you can face north. I want you to all have the best view in the space as we unfold this story that we're going to talk about. So we have this great public room at the top of our library, which is the non-fiction collections of the library and all these study positions. And as we knew this would be a great room for the public with fantastic views north and south, I knew that the roof had to float above the space like a cloud. And what we're gonna be watching today is, I'd like you to look to your left to the west and you see a jagged line, not unlike the horizon around Phoenix of the mountains. And that jagged line will start to move down like a curtain of sunlight and kiss the floor. There is a six inch skylight that runs the full length of the 300 foot room on the west. And now let's look to your right, look to the east. And you can see it's a different thing that's happening there right now. Now, while we talk you through this, Focus straight ahead, you see a big ellipse over the center elevator. That path of that circular skylight in the, over the Crystal Canyon is gonna keep moving till it centers. But what we wanna do is we wanna look again to the west and through that six inch slot, you read the truth of light. You see the unevenness, what looked like a few minutes ago, perfectly flat walls. And now you see shadows and highlights and elegance. You see this perfectly straight line of its riglets of, of, of shadow. And as the day progresses, and this is something you can see at Burton Bar every day is the roof does float. So as we proceed towards the start of summer 2018, it's like watching a teapot boil. It's very slow and tedious. So for the next 15 minutes or so, we're gonna tell a few stories, we're gonna keep watching that light so we don't miss the start of summer, but you can see it moves down. Now this room, which our engineers could have easily spanned without any columns, has a 
has a special language in its structure. It's like a hyperstyle hall from ancient times of Egypt or places where we didn't have structural magic. It's very basic, so it's a 32 foot eight grid, and these tapered columns that you see are mimicking maybe palm trees, maybe they're mimicking cactus, maybe they're just being columns that hold up the, the roof. But the engineers we were working with were state of the art, the same engineers that the, worked with the architects of the Sydney Opera House and a museum in Paris called Centre Pompidou. The great buildings of the world came to our team and we worked on sustainability, we worked on design, and we built this building. 280,000 square foot building was built for $98 a foot when it was completed back in 1995. That was not believed at the time, but we can attest to this was what less than $100 a square foot brings you in architecture if you really care and try, maybe have a little talent, a little skill, and a lot of passion. So you're seeing the curtain of light come down slowly now on that western flank. So along with that, we ask our structural engineer to come up with a design for the roof that would allow us to have a skylight over every column. So the tapering column goes up. We have what's called a tensegrity roof. There's probably a few people in this room that look old enough to know the name Buckminster Fuller. He invented the, the geodesic dome is one of the things he's very furious about. He created great maps of a new way to look at the world. He was way ahead of his time, a total genius. And it was his idea of the use of tensegrity design which is what this cable lace work is based on that is extremely efficient and it has a lot of the principles of his work on geodesic domes. So as we challenged our engineers at Overup and Mike Ischler in particular to come up with an idea, he had this idea that if I make this cable cat's cradle across your roof using these principles, we can literally float at the tip of our column from this steel detail that looks like almost a candle illuminated, we can float your roof. So that gives this special mythical quality to this room and its space. Now we're seeing a lot more of the imperfections as well as the magic on the west wall. It's happening slowly. Now as we move through this sequence, we designed the library to be a great transparent room to the main street of our city, the civic building. We protected our sides with the copper clad saddlebags of service where mechanical things and functional things work, but we kept the transparency to the north as we look up to the northern lights as well as to the south and the skyline beyond our louvers. The shade sails on the north protect that glass from direct sun early in the morning and late in the afternoon in the middle of summer when the sun is high there and the south louvers that are overridden right now and closed, but you know the skyline of Phoenix and South Mountain is visible there. And again, as you come to this room, you can all enjoy where you are. And we're not talking about a phenomenon that is about, we are in Phoenix, Arizona. Yes, we are. We're in the southwest of the United States. Yes, we are. We're on planet Earth, but as we evolve the big idea that we've all come to enjoy today, this building is designed to place us in the universe. And the sun is at the center of that, and that becomes the organizing point for what you're about to experience. Now I'm good, you know, Wendell and I have been working together a bunch of time. We sat in on all the public meetings. We did this whole thing and lived this building and breathed this building. And as it evolved, one of the first buildings we went to before we on our nickel, nobody, not the cities, we went to Paris to see the Bibliothèque Nationale, which was done in 1851. Now why, if you're designing a library in 1992, would you go to Paris? You go there to see one of the great buildings of the world because architecture does inspire us. Buildings are designed from the inside out and the outside in, and when there's a symmetry about that and a celebration, you have a room happening like this. And right now we're starting to see the light drop over on the left. So I'm gonna let Wendell talk about going to the sun. Thanks, Will. 
So um, I'll just add some other thoughts as we watch this happen, and Will's going to walk us through when this, kiss, this light on the west kisses the floor. Um, one thing I would just mention is the, the tensegrity, the, the key difference that Fuller had is that you can take load through a tensile network and it's not po post and beam, i.e. the column does not have to touch the roof and that's what you're looking at. And so the, the idea of celebrating light here, and I, I guess his, historically I was just, you know, you, you read on the news this morning and every morning of the solstice there are many, many places like Stonehenge. There was a crowd about this size at Stonehenge celebrating the sunrise on summer solstice. But there are only two sites prior to this site in the world, I don't remember the names, one is in China, that celebrates the summer solstice at solar noon. And it's interesting that the root word of solstice is sol, which is sun. Stis means standing still. So it's the moment of the day, either in winter or summer, where the sun stands still and starts to go from this longest day forward until the shortest day of the year, December 20th, the, the days will get shorter and vice versa is happening in the south, southern hemisphere. So the origin of the word solstice is about solar noon when the sun is standing still. And so we had this idea to celebrate the valley of the sun on a daily basis with these slot skylights and you're seeing it's really, it's, it's hitting the floor on the west here at the south end, and it will actually hit the floor from south to north. You're, you're gonna see it happen right now. You can see the, the rolling of the mill steel that this concrete wall panels were cast against. You can see 10,000 10, foot candles shows a lot, and that's what we're seeing through the skylight. And then, this idea of dialing up the blue sky at the skylights with a laminated piece of glass, same as your car windshield technology, but it's sky blue. And this little clear lens of light roams this room all year long. And right now it's lighting the candles. So if you get in a place where you can see this detail that takes the cables, there in most columns right now, it's right on lighting the candle. It's not Indiana Jones. It's not lighting a crystal that's going to open a magic door. It's just light moving in a space. And it's pretty cool that y'all been showing up here, some of you, and some of you've never seen this before, but for 23 years, we've been celebrating this since this building opened in the Valley of the Sun. It's pretty great. Okay, so how do we know it's really solar noon? Because it's not. We've got about another eight minutes of spring. So it's, it's cool out there. We've amplified the coolness, not just by the sky blue, but shortly before we were working on this building, I had the privilege of seeing my first glacier in Alaska. And so what you're really looking at isn't the blue sky, it's the color of a glacial, glacier. You've seen pictures in National Geographic on the bookshelves here, and I always used to think they were color tinting before photography. When you go and see your first glacier, it's the color of that lens of blue. So again, it gives us this cool effect, not just with a K, but with a C as well. So now let's look to the west, and now we're gonna all be bobbleheads for a little bit. We're gonna go left, we're gonna go right, until we get in about six minutes that we know it's summer. So over on the left now, you can see the, the light has cascaded down the wall, dropped like a drape, and it has kissed the bottom. So any of you that can see the floor over against the wall there, 
There is 10,000 foot candles. You'd think it would bleach out the carpet. It looks like a white river running north along the west wall, okay? Now, when you look over on the east, and you're seeing all the shadows, so it's interesting. I don't know if Jenna Bombersbach is here today, but she writes mysteries about murders and things like that, and she's a noted author and a sort of an architecture junkie. And Jenna and I were here close to when it was opening, and she was seeing the shadows on the wall, and she was conjuring up a mystery novel that part of the story would be that you're in the room and the angle of the shadow on the wall would set things up. Okay, so right now, we don't have any mystery to solve because it's becoming. Look over to the northeast now. Northeast, everybody. See that suddenly there's that one little area that we have highlights on the east wall. What you're gonna see and know, and we can almost stop talking, is that at solar noon, the east wall will match the west wall exactly in shadow and light. Now it's pretty weird if you tell somebody, and I, there was uh, somebody on the board here who was very smart, and when I brought him up here early in the process explaining, he said, no, well, no. He called his father in England, actually, because he didn't believe what I was telling him. But the fact that the sun is so far away from this room we can have a symmetrical pattern of light on a west wall and an east wall. So we're moving fast now. What was so slow a minute ago, look at how it's changing. We're starting to see highlights along that wall. See all the daggers of light coming down? It almost looks like we've cut the wall apart and there's LED lights running down those verticals. Right now, if you look straight at the elevator, you can see that it's a little bit off center yet. On the left, there's about 12 inches of shadow. On the right, there's about nine. So as the sun keeps moving over, we still have, we're, we're two and a half inches away from solar noon and a new summer. The wall on the left hasn't reached full intensity yet. See how the west is, or east wall is coming up? It's coming up folks fast, really fast. Now look up into the tips of the candles. You see the dagger of light? There's a V perfectly cast in each one that goes from zero at the meeting of the concrete and flares out towards the tip, just like lighting a birthday cake. And this is the birthday celebration. So we're back and forth right now. That symmetry is there. What time do we have? Somebody give me the time. 12.30, they said it was gonna be a little bit early this year. We're two minutes early than normal. Uh, so around 1231, I believe, is at this latitude in this time zone. And again, we're here because we're at the western end of a time zone and we're on daylight savings. So solar noon, you know, it's relevant to the big scope and span of the world. Right now, we are just there. Congratulations to being in Phoenix for another solstice. Thank you very much for coming. And we're very happy that the library reopened for this. It's been an interesting journey of 11 months, but I think we find a building that has all the energy of 1995, but has grown and matured in many different ways. I hope you enjoy and continue to enjoy it. It has now become a browsing library again. One of the big things we did in this restoration was when you see all the new green and white graphics everywhere, Last time you were in this room, we had range numbers and we had Dewey numbers and we had no words. And so you walked down, you looked in the computer, you found your book you wanted, and you'd be walking down a bunch of numbers. But now all of a sudden you can be walking down to a book about science or carpentry or travel and you'll see, gee whiz, there's books on cooking. There's books on art. We've transformed your library into a browsing library. And maybe you'll never get to that book you were looking for because you'll find 10 more that interest you more that day and you'll keep coming back as a browser. So thank you for supporting the library. Thank you for supporting our community. It is about you. It is about good government and paying our taxes. And that's the privilege we own as Americans. We are a social community. Thank you all.